Hello everybody and welcome to Chrono Plays in the Real World. As you can see, I got a box today. Yes, that is the Oculus Rift Development Kit 2. As you can see, DK2. And as you can see in front of you, I have already opened this. I was going to do an unboxing video, and in fact I did, but I didn't like how it turned out and it seemed to be a little bit limited on the information. But now that I've played with this thing for a few hours, I feel a little bit more knowledgeable in what it does and how it's all set up. So I feel better about making a video about this. So let's start with the thing that struck me as the most odd from this, and that is the packaging. Now the Oculus Rift, the original developer's kit, came in this box. Okay, it's one of them, you know, really hard packing boxes designed to take a serious beating. And if we look at this thing, we can see it's pretty serious packaging. Now, I've dealt with this kind of packaging before, and this is expensive, expensive stuff. It's also designed for really fragile electric, electrical components. You know, stuff that you have to ship through untrustworthy means or, you know, you have to take on a flight and go through TSA or something like that. This box, however, as you can see, is just simply cardboard. Now, inside of it, it's got uh, the good packing material and all that, but still, it's just cardboard. Of course, it got shipped via UPS, so it's nothing major. Uh, UPS is usually pretty good. I haven't had any problems myself with UPS. But, you know, it is a little bit strange. I understand why they did that, though, is because those packages, those, those boxes are expensive, to say the least. Uh, and they're, like I said, they're really only used for going through untrustworthy means. Uh, they're designed for taking a pounding, a pounding that uh, this really shouldn't need to be taking. Inside the box, we had, obviously, the Oculus Rift itself. We have this little guy, which looks like a web camera, and that's because it kinda is. It's an infrared camera. Now, this worked kinda like the Wii, or I guess technically the Wii U as well, except that the Wii has the sensor bar at the top of the TV that actually sends the infrared signal and the Wii remote receives it. This, however, is what sits on top of the TV and it receives the infrared signal. The infrared transmitters are built into the Oculus Rift itself. Now, this is designed with uh, either a tripod mount or it opens up and it's actually very stiff. So this was well designed because it has to be stiff for it to stay on your TV like that. So this, is, this was designed very well. I quite like how they designed this. As we can see, we have the two different connectors. We have the connector for the sync cable, and we have a mini USB connection for power and connecting to the computer. Oop. Then we have you know, the microfiber cloth it's kind of common with this kind of stuff because you know you're dealing with optics speaking of optics these are one set of the eye cups and these are the b grade cups now the b grade cups are designed for people who are nearsighted who are very nearsighted like me the a cups are designed for people who are slightly nearsighted and those come pre-installed in the Oculus Rift. We will get to that in a moment. Uh, then, of course, we have the power source, an ad a changeable power source with a removable connector. So you can plug it into all of the different types of plugs around the world. We have the Australian plug. We have the European plug. And then I don't remember which one this is for. I really don't. But, you know, they all work. Kind of a universal thing. We have the DVI-D to HDMI adapter. And I emphasize DVI-D 
because it's the digital version of the DVI port, not the DVI-A, which is the analog port, which has the adapter from DVI to 15 pin. This is the digital one. And they give you this because the Oculus Rift, unlike the original one, only has an HDMI connection. This is the sync cable, which is what looks to me just to be a mini headphone jack, a mini stereo headphone jack. No, this is the micro headphone jack, not the mini one. This is the micro headphone jack. And if you had one of those really old phones, I bet you this would plug into it just fine. However, all the new ones, all the new phones, just have the regular mini headphone jack. And then we have our standard USB cable, just standard USB-B to micro USB, and that's for the camera itself. And then along with everything, we have the quick start guide that will teach you basically how to plug everything in and make sure everything's working, even though it's not 100% complete and you do have to put a little effort into getting this working. Now let's take a closer look at the Oculus itself. Now, as we can see, it's all one piece, unlike the original Oculus, which if I take a look at that real quick, we can see that the original Oculus was two pieces connected by a cable. Now this is the screen itself, and this is the hardware translator. Uh, it's got the power button, brightness, contrast settings, you know, basically the basic control of the screen itself. It also has the HDMI, DVI, USB, and power all you know, right here, nice centralized location. The new Oculus, however, doesn't have all of that, but everything is still controlled in a centralized location. It's this tiny little box right here. Power goes in here, the sync cable goes in there, and then you have the choice, of, well, you only have HDMI connector and then the USB port. Now this USB port seems to have the power to run the entire Oculus itself. That's what the manual seems to be suggesting. It's saying that the power cable is optional. And I guess that kind of makes sense from the research I've done with this Oculus. The screen in it is high res. It's, uh, well, I would say 1920 by 1080, but that's not actually accurate. What's accurate is 1080 by 1920. And I know that sounds a little bit weird because it's the same thing, isn't it? Well, no, not exactly. This is 1920 by 1080. However, this is 1080 by 1920. And the difference with that is how it shows up on your computer and technically its refresh rate. Um, when I first plugged this thing in to my computer, uh, after I figured out that my USB ports are slightly broken, but that's my fault, I saw it showed up vertical on my resolution settings. I had to set it to portrait to get it to go side to side. So that's a little weird, and I think it's a glitch. At least I really, really hope it's a glitch, considering how you have to set this thing up to actually work. Um, but I'll get to that later. This is a higher resolution screen than the original Oculus Rift. The original Oculus Rift, I believe, was 1280 by 720. And of course, split between both of your eyes, it's a little low res. This is 1920 by 1080, but it's still split between both eyes. The screen, however, from what, we, what I'm understanding, is actually a screen that's used for a phone. So it's slightly different. Um, it has a hex design for the pixels. So instead of just being square, it's odd how the pixels are uh, arranged. They're like interleaved. It's supposed to make it so that the screen dooring effect that was extremely noticeable on the original Oculus Rift is less noticeable. It is less noticeable. However, it is still very noticeable. <laughs> Now, the fact that this is a phone screen also adds a different problem. Now, I mentioned that it was 1080 by 1920. Well, that's because of the type of screen it is. Its refresh rate 
instead of being like a standard LCD screen, like an LCD monitor, monitor where it's top to bottom, it's left to right. So it refreshes this way. Now, you might not think that's very noticeable considering this thing's supposed to refresh 60 times per second. But keep in mind, this is a system designed for gamers and gamers have the ability to tell the difference between 30 FPS and 60 FPS. And in some cases, even 120 FPS. And that's very noticeable when it comes to latency. Uh, 30 FPS is actually harder to play in fast paced first person shooter games, for example, than 60 frames per second and even harder than 120 frames per second. So having this eye refresh before this eye may not seem noticeable to most people, but it's very noticeable to us. I noticed it very quickly. It has horrible, horrible ghosting. Um, basically, I'm seeing duplicate images. It's like my eyes aren't quite focusing on what they should be. So it, it's, it's very noticeable, the ghosting in this. Um, now, is that my biggest complaint about this? No, no, it's not. It is not my biggest complaint. Um, I mean, it is noticeable. It is very noticeable and it's horribly noticeable. But my biggest complaint about this is the lenses themselves. Okay. The problem with optics is that they have to be aligned perfectly. So when I put this thing on my head for the first time, the top was all kinds of insanely blurred. I'm like, how, how does this qualify as better than the original Oculus Rift? Well, I realized that where this wants to sit on my face is actually about a quarter of an inch lower than where it should be. So once I pushed it up on my face to where it's, it feels wrong sitting there, my eyes aligned right and I could see. Now that still isn't perfect. The warping is still noticeable but it's not nearly as bad as when they were misaligned. So if you have your own set of dev kit two Oculus, then that's something you want to keep in mind is that the alignment needs to be pretty much perfect, which now that I think about this, I hadn't thought of this before, but everybody's eyes are a different distance apart. If a quarter of an inch down made that much of a dramatic difference, like to the point where I thought it was just straight up broken, I was tempted to just throw it in the trash and just write it off as a bad idea entirely. If that is that noticeable, what if my eyes aren't wide enough apart or too wide apart for these lenses? That's an interesting thought. Hmm. I'll have to pay attention to that. I don't think I noticed something like that. I noticed it vertically. I didn't notice it horizontally, but that's something to think about. But I bet you it's also something that the Oculus people have already put a lot of thought into. Whew. All right, so moving on. On the front of the Oculus, oops, we see the power button, which is very noticeable. It's a simple clicky button. It's not a push and hold kind of thing. It's nothing major. Over here, we have an access port with a USB connection and what looks like a headphone jack. Now I'm not hundred percent sure what these are for. I'm not finding them. I'm not finding any information for them. I think it said it in one of the videos that I saw about the Oculus Rift, but I can't remember for sure. I think these are extra ports for developers. These aren't going to be something that's going to be in the release edition. But, you know, I, I can't remember off the top of my head. And I did look into it, and I can't find the information. So I'm not sure. Now, the cable itself goes over the top of the head and behind the head. Now, this is actually quite useful. The design itself is quite useful having that behind the head. However, not having it attached here is quite annoying. Now I understand why they don't have it attached because this is supposed to be a flexible connection for different sized heads. So you don't want this being either too tight or too loose. However, if you know, you store it and it ends up like this, it's actually kind of hard to get it back 
without going out of your way and pulling the cable separately. And if you don't know that right off the top of your head, you're not going to catch it and it's going to be a slight problem for a moment. Now, of course, that's a minor difficulty. That's a minor inconvenience at best. It's not really a problem. And if push comes to shove, you could probably put some form of clip here to make it so that this doesn't slide down. And I probably will do that eventually just because, you know, it makes a lot of sense. Now, let's look at the overall thing. Now, the overall, if we compare to the original Oculus Rift, we can see that the original Oculus Rift was much larger uh, by about mm, a quarter, I would say. This is, well, the new Oculus Rift is a little bit bigger. Now, both of these are also, well, no, the new Oculus Rift I have pushed out the whole way. So if we push this back in the whole way, then we look at it like this again. Eh, it's a little bit bigger which is probably a good thing. I always thought the screen was a little too close on the original Oculus Rift. So pushing it a little bit farther, a little bit farther away and readjusting the optics is probably a good idea. Now this one is a tiny bit heavier than the original Oculus Rift. Now you would think that's a bad thing, but you know what? It's not really noticeable. Um, I mean, it weighs a little bit more than my cell phone, so that's not a lot of weight right there. I mean, it's a cell phone screen, so technically it's your cell phone attached to your face. Um, so it's not, it's not a bad thing. It's not uncomfortable to wear. Now, one of the big things about the dev kit, too, was that the refresh rate was supposed to be significantly better to help with the motion sickness. Um, and I get very motion sick very easily, so I am a perfect person to test this out. And I will tell you straight up, it does not help with motion sickness, okay? It, it doesn't. The ghosting that I mentioned earlier with the refresh rate going from the left to the right instead of top to bottom, it's giving information to one eye that the other eye is not getting, and that just makes things worse. Um, I played with it a little while before and I'm still a little nauseous from it. I told you, I am very sensitive to motion sickness. Um, I actually have, it's actually a problem to the point where I can't drive. Well, I can drive, but I can't be in the passenger seats. I have to be driving or I get severely motion sick and it bothers me for a long, long time. But Let's get to the point. Let's take a look at how this thing works. And here we are in Euro Truck Simulator 2. Yes, okay. Um, you'll notice that I'm not doing a face cam. And the reason I'm not doing a face cam is for people who might want to watch this with an Oculus or possibly the Google Cardboard, if you have that. If you don't know what that is, go look it up. It's actually kind of hilarious um, and is a real thing. But... Uh, yeah, if you have that kind of setup uh, with an Oculus or the Google Cardboard or some other kind of setup like that, you can watch this YouTube video in full screen, and it will work with the Oculus as well. So I always thought that was pretty cool. But anyway, so um, this is the main menu, and I'm moving my head around, but it's not changing the position of the menu, so it's actually kind of making me a little sick. Uh <laughs> So let, let's, let's get into the game. Um, this is the updated Euro Truck Simulator. Uh, we got, uh, what was it, 1.1, I think, a couple days ago. Uh, and I did confirm that the, this version of Euro Truck Simulator is compatible with the dev kit too. And I can show you here. We'll just go into drive real quick. I'm not in a mission or anything like that. It broke. Yeah. Um, how am I pointing the wrong way? <laughs> like seriously, it should know that I want to go. I want to look the other way. Um, I found a glitch, guys. Let's see, I think. Boop. Not that button. 
Boop. Oh, shit. That was record, wasn't it? Um. Oh, those are the wrong buttons entirely. Let's try this. Boop. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, I was pushing the wrong buttons. Um, F12 recenters your uh, appearance. I feel short now. I do. I feel a lot shorter than I should be. Um, though I did tell it that I wanted to... Uh, I did tell it my height, but I think I would be taller in this truck. But as you can see, I'm looking around. Um, and what you are probably not seeing is this horrible ghosting effect. Everything seems to be shaking around. And when I move my head, it all blurs horribly. Um, and it's not motion blur. Because when I move my head, the image duplicates itself. So it doesn't blur. It adds another image. So one, up, one of my eyes is getting information before the other. But as we can see, it is working fairly well outside of that little glitch where I was pointing the wrong way. Um, and it, I mean, I'm looking up, you know, I can look around, I can tilt my head and it's all really fun stuff, but Euro truck simulator also has the added advantage of taking, of, you know, being specifically designed for the dev kit too. Um, so if I lean forward a little bit, I'm actually leaning forward. So this works outside of the standard rotation. It actually, you know, you lean forward and you lean backwards. And that's from the infrared receiver that I pointed out earlier. It also, ha I also could do this. Where I go sideways, which is really cool. And then the, the, the Euro Truck Simulator 2 people did something even cooler. If we look at the mirror, the mirror itself changes based on the angle I'm looking at it at. Just like it would in real life. Um, I mean, it still looks weird. It still looks like it's an LCD screen that just happens to be reflecting what I'm looking at. It's weird, but it works. Um, I quite enjoy this, actually. What I don't like, and I can't remember how to get rid of off the top of my head. I'll worry about it later. I don't like the mirror in the upper left-hand corner, but I know it's just a push button. Um, F2 to toggle mirror. Hang on. Boop. Boop. There we go. Okay, they go away. And then... Oh, I can't see that. F1 to unpause the game. F2 to toggle side mirrors. F3 to toggle route advisor modes. Oh, that's to make the route advisor disappear. Um... Yeah, I couldn't read the top part there, the F1 or Joy Button 6 to pause or unpause the game because of what I was pointing out earlier with the perfectly aligned optics. Um, the Oculus Rift, I had it aligned perfectly on my head before when I started the recording, but it did very slowly slide down my face. So I got blurred up there where it says that. Um, let us, let's see, not that one. I'm doing the keyboard by touch because I can't see. All right, there we go. All right, that's a little bit better. Um, now, if I had the updated, like the uh, luxury kit for this truck, I would have a route advisor sticking out of the dash right there. That slot that I can't... That slot right there. <laughs> um that slot would have the route advisor in it, or at least a GPS. It's not as advanced as the route advisor, but it works. Um, that floor seems awfully shallow, doesn't it? I mean, granted, I've never seen a truck from this angle before. I've never really been in a big rig like this. Um, plus, I should be a bit forward, like probably about there. Yeah, probably, considering where the seats are. Uh, I'm too far away from the camera, the infrared camera, the receiver thingamabob. Uh, so everything looks a little weird to me. I never actually really looked at the inside of this cabin before. That looks very flat. <laughs> but uh, I quite like this. I quite enjoy it. Uh, I mean, everything does look 3D. It's a little weird with the blur. Um... Well, not really with the blur. It's with the ghosting. That's what it is. 
But uh, it is pretty cool. I quite enjoy it. Um, all right, so start the engine. Uh, I am in parking brake, so space, um, drive. It's really hard to see the dash, but I can see it better now that I'm shorter. When I was taller, when I was like driving like this, it's almost impossible to see the dash. But this is how I was driving when I first tried to play this. All right. We. I pulled over a little bit because it was making me motion sick to play this game. And, uh, I mean, it kind of makes sense that I would be motion sick. Woo! Yay! I'm having fun with this. Um, the route advisor is a little bit easier to see, so I... It's... The route advisor has the speed on it, the speed I'm traveling, so it's a little easier to see than the dash. And the signs! The signs are almost impossible to see uh, from a distance. Um... So it's like you're driving around almost like you are nearsighted. Um, so I have my glasses on. In reality, I can see better than this with my glasses on. Uh, that was a sign. Um, yeah. I am really liking this. I have to admit that right, right now. I have to admit I really, really like this. It actually looks really good. Um, I wish the screen dooring wasn't such a big of a problem, but that's why the Oculus people specifically stated that if you're just a regular consumer, do not buy the dev kit too. Um, and uh, that's because that the release version of the Oculus Rift is going to be so much more better. Um, now this is a definitely a marked improvement from the original Oculus Rift. But it still has a long way to go. Uh, we need... I don't know if, like, one of those retina screens would work better. Um, because we're really, really close up. But you do need something with an extremely high pixel de density to be able to truly see properly. Um, like, I couldn't read that green sign there. I could tell it was green, I could tell something was there. Um, but I couldn't read it. And I would point out that... Roads in Europe... Well, roads in the UK... Still piss me off. Um, but you know what? There is a marked improvement in this version of the game. I haven't been randomly hit by AI. Uh, there... The... The update, the 1.1 update, did a massive change to the artificial intelligence for the cars. So, yeah. <laughs> so far, I haven't been randomly hit. So that's kind of a good thing. Alright, well, I think I covered the Oculus fairly well. Uh, fairly thoroughly. And the lighting is actually really good. I'm, a I'm quite impressed. Okay, Euro Truck people, you are doing a damn good job. I cannot wait till American Truck Simulator comes out. Though, that's going to be entertaining. I want to do a trip from... Uh, yeah, I want to start in Pittsburgh. If it, Once American Truck Simulator comes out, I want to start a company in Pittsburgh. Because, you know, that's where I live. And... Uh, I want to do the full thing, the whole way from the East Coast to the West Coast. Of course, unlike the UK, where that's, you know, a 12-hour drive or something like that, um, that is like a week's worth of driving. I don't know. But this is quite pretty. I, I Now that I'm really looking at this and ignoring my stomach, I am quite impressed with this. Um... The next thing I'm going to play is uh, Half-Life, Half-Life 2, because I know Half-Life 2 was, has built-in support for the Oculus. I don't know if it supports the dev kit too, um, but I'm about to find out. Now you might be noticing the colors. It looks almost like a one of the old school 3D things where it was the red cyan, the red was on one side, the cyan was on the other. 
and when you looked at it with just your naked eye, you could see both colors and it looked really, really weird. You might notice that here, and it's noticeable. Believe me, it's noticeable. Even on the Oculus, it's noticeable. But from what I could tell, that is because of the game, not the Oculus. Because if it was the Oculus, you guys wouldn't see it. However, I can see it very clearly if I'm just playing this on the big screen TV, not on the Oculus. But it is noticeable on the Oculus. And the screen dooring is much, much more noticeable on the red. And I read there's a reason for that. Um, because of the type of screen that's in here, it's the, the colors are weird. There are not the proper number of colors for each pixel. It's strange. I don't really remember all the statistics, so I'm not going to spout them off because, well, I don't know them. Um, but it, it, it's been just, it's described as a perceived lower resolution than 1080 because of the colors of the pixels. Let's see, where can I park it? I think I can park it here. Yeah, I should be able to park it over here. Yeah, I'm just parking my truck. Hmm. Probably not there. <sighs> Though, probably not here either. But it'll do for me just parking things. Oh, those logs are even 3D. That's awesome. Well, the... The reason that I'm so impressed with this is because I don't see 3D in the real world. I don't. Uh, at least not as clear as I see it in, you know, like 3D TV or the Oculus or that kind of thing. So seeing the world in this kind of 3D is new to me. But uh, anyways, I am going to end it here uh, before I get motion sick. And then I'm going to go play some Half-Life 2 until I get motion sick. And you can tell that those those trees are just sprites. <laughs> it's a little disturbing. But the trees are just flat sprites. They're not 3D rendered. <laughs> mm. Anyway, so I'm going to end the video here. I hope this was detailed enough for the Oculus Rift. I hope that it got ev some people at least excited for the Oculus. At least the release version. Like I said, if you're not uh, w like a hardcore... I don't know, tech geek like I am, or developer or whatever, uh, don't buy the dev kit too. If you're just a regular consumer, don't buy the dev kit too. Wait until the release. In fact, I might go so far as to say it to wait until the second edition of the release version. Uh, that way all of the little glitches are worked out. Though, if the difference between the, the Dev Kit 1 and the Dev Kit 2 continue, and we have the same amount of difference between the Dev Kit 2 and the release version, I think the release version is going to be pretty damn impressive. So I'm a bit excited for that. Uh, but, yep, until then, I will see you guys in the next episode. And as always, keep playing the game and have fun. And I hope I didn't make you guys sick from me bouncing around. Uh, I, I know the screen is bouncing from me talking because I'm seeing severe ghosting. This will probably be significantly better if I just keep my head still and just turn when I need to. I don't know.